This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. The German Synodal Way last week endorsed formally breaking from the 2,000-year teachings of the Catholic Church, bringing the Church into new, uncharted territory. According to the German bishops, the spotless bride of Christ has been wrong on issues of morality, which is kind of key to the Church, and to remedy that, the Church needs to look for guidance from the secular world and its ever-changing values, which apparently gets the question of morality right for now. That's the takeaway from the German Synodal Way, and that the bishops of that country as a body and with a supermajority decided to embrace the James Martin sin. Unions for those that live in that state of sin to be blessed by the church, as well as the ordination of women and preaching by the laity at mass, among other novelties that have no roots in historic Christianity. The German bishops have decided to move forward. And, you know, predictably, there's barely been a peep of protest from the Vatican over all of this. But the two of the better bishops have stepped up and are demanding that Rome act, and act now. Now, those bishops are not surprising to anyone paying attention are Cardinals Gerhard Mueller of Germany and Raymond Leo Burke of the United States. What they demand is truly remarkable. They demand that the German bishops be put on trial by Rome for heresy, and if found guilty, that they be removed from their offices by the church. I can't imagine a heresy trial in the church under Francis, not in our time. I can't imagine a heresy trial in the church post-Vatican II, to be honest with you, but... That is precisely what these bishops are demanding. Our story comes from Catholic News Agency. Headline, Cardinals Mueller, Burke, rebuke German bishops over the James Martin pairing blessings. This sh story should have set off tidal waves and earthquakes in the church, but we've had barely a peep on this story since it broke over the weekend. The implications of this are enormous. Will Francis act to preserve unity against potential schism and sacrifice dogma and doctrine in the name of unity? Will he do that? Does he actually quietly agree with the German bishops despite his words to the contrary? I guess we'll find out in the coming weeks. So, from the Catholic News Agency article, quote, German Cardinal Gerhard Mueller and American Cardinal Raymond Burke rebuked the German bishops and called on to them to be sanctioned in an interview on EWTN's The World Over with Raymond Arroyo, which aired on Thursday night, March 16th. There must be a trial, and they must be sentenced, and they must be removed from their office if they are not converting themselves and they are not accepting the Catholic doctrine, Mueller said during the interview. That is very sad that a majority of bishops acted explicitly against the revealed doctrine and the revealed faith of the Catholic Church and of all our Christian thinking against the Bible, the Word of God in the Holy Scripture and in the apostolic tradition and in the defined doctrine of the Catholic Church, the Cardinal added. Mueller said the lay people and the bishops who supported these resolutions at the German Synodal Way are, quote, influenced by this letter acronym and a related ideology, which is materialistic and nihilistic. It is absolutely blasphemic to make a blessing about those forms of life which is, according to the biblical and ecclesial doctrine, a sin, because all forms of activities of the flesh outside of valid matrimony is sin and cannot be blessed, he said. End quote. Cardinal Mueller then went on to defend the biblical view of the nuptial sacrament and the limitations for those who wish to make use of that sacrament, repeating the traditional limitations of who can participate in it. Look, folks, this is Catholicism and Morality 101 stuff, and yet many Catholics feel like the secular position is valid and should be taken seriously, and the Church shouldn't oppose it, that we should keep to you know these opinions to ourselves and not really try to correct the world. Now, those same Catholics are faced with having to coherently oppose the attempt to bring this nonsense into the church itself, which was all too predictable given the free reign that men like Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church have been given to run roughshod over the church's moral teachings for decades now. He's not alone in this either. He wasn't even really a trailblazer. He's just the most charismatic and latest iteration of it. Bishops have been ignoring the church's moral teachings on this topic and 
having masses offered for the so-called community in question for decades now and have been ignoring the pretty black and white teachings on this topic, what scripture says about all this, and what the deposit of the faith in its apostolic tradition says. That's to be expected, especially in this revolutionary period we live in in the church. What isn't to be expected is for Rome to act in a meaningful way. Cardinal Burke wants heresy trials for these men. <laughs> Quote, Burke urged the Vatican to sanction the bishops who acted in favor of blessing the James Martin pairings. Whether it's a departure, heretical teaching, and denial of one of the doctrines of the faith, or apostasy in the sense of simply walking away from Christ and from his teaching in the church to embrace some other form of religion, these are crimes, Burke said. I mean, these are sins against Christ himself, and obviously then of the most serious nature. And the Code of Canon Law provides the appropriate sanctions. The Cardinal warned that the Church is being, quote, used to push an ideological program. These are human inventions, human ideologies that are being pushed and the Church is being used, Burke added. And what it does is it renders the Church then into some kind of a human agency, almost like a government agency that's being manipulated to foster certain programs and certain pr ideas. And so we need to wake up to what is happening. You will notice that in a lot of this talk, you never hear the name of our Lord, Burke said. You never hear talk about what our Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us, what he's asking of us. So this is a very serious situation. The Cardinal also responded to Arroyo's suggestion that, uh, quote, opponents of these reforms are often derided as going against the Pope. We are the ones who love the Pope and are trying to help him carry out his mission. Whereas these people who simply ignore what Rome is saying to them, what the See of Peter is saying to them, show that they have no respect for him, meaning Francis, whatever they are indeed the enemies of the Pope. I think it's clear any reasonable person can see that, he said. End quote. We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> the concept of reform is the key concept here. The church in our time is in a moment of reform. Voices from all across the spectrum are demanding reform from within the church. The extreme modernists, represented by both Francis himself and the German bishops, are on one side. More moderate voices like Burke and Mueller, they are not traditionalists, folks. It's good to remember that. They are moderates in the grand scheme of things. They are on the other. And traditionalists standing outside of all this are demanding the only real reform that can actually solve this problem. By returning the church to the practice of her traditional teachings in all things. Because yes, questions of liturgy and the role of the church in the world and roles of peoples within the church are directly tied to the real lived lives of everyday Catholics. There are real consequences that happen like this when we start playing around with the deposit of the faith, including how we wrestle with questions of morality. The church used to be much clearer on these issues than she is now, due to that diabolic disorientation that has entered the church that we had been warned about 60 years ago. An example of this thinking comes from a quote from Pope St. Pius X, and it's instructive here. So, according to that holy pope of fond memory, quote, We believe that many in the Catholic world of the laity, and even worse, even among the clergy, hiding under the guise of love for the church, lack a solid foundation of philosophy and theology, poisoned by false teaching, and setting aside all modesty, posing as reformers of the church. They boldly gather in their rakes, attacking the most sacred of Christ's work, not sparing even the divine person of the Redeemer himself, whom with blasphemous audacity they reduce to a poor man. It is absolutely true that they are worse than any other enemy of the church. As already mentioned, they plot their plans to bring ruin to the church, not only outside, but also inside the church. This danger has settled in the blood of the church in her deepest interior. Therefore, damage to the church becomes more certain the better they know the church. In addition, they lay their hands not only on the branches and twigs, but deep down at the root, on faith and on the deepest fibers of faith. End quote. So those words of St. Pius X come from his landmark encyclical Pascendi Dominici Gregis, which I have recorded on this channel. I recorded it like four years ago now. 
It was originally published in 1907 and formally defined the heresy of modernism. It's a must-read or must-listen if you prefer. Again, I recorded it several years ago for this channel, and it's worth your time even if it's one of the most dense encyclicals ever written. Burke and Mueller make one mistake in their appeal to Rome. They claim that the German bishops are undermining Francis and the papacy and his authority as pope by trying to go it alone on this question. They're actually wrong on that, because Francis has demonstrated time and again that he's on the side of the German bishops, whether it's with letters written to congratulate the German bishops on their process or on other things. It's like on the question of unity that Francis has been opposed to what they're doing. How do we know this? Earlier this month, Francis named several new cardinals to his new council of bishops who help him govern the church. It's had several iterations since 2013, and it just had a new one. Initially, the council had nine cardinals on it, including Pell and a few others, but that has since changed dramatically. The cardinals he named recently were all pretty nasty types, too, including Cardinal Hollerick of Luxembourg, who is one of the two of these cardinals that you need to really pay attention to when the next conclave comes around. He is a stridently pro-James Martin cardinal, and has expressed opinions that put him on the same side of the German bishops on most of the issues causing this controversy now. And Francis made him head of the Synod of Citadality, or like the co-chair of it. And now he's on Francis's personal committee of advisors, too. So case in point, this comes from a LifeSite News article on Hollerick from a couple of weeks ago. Quote, the inclusion of Hollerick is arguably the most prominent appointment among the new cardinals taking their seats at the table. As well as head of the European Bishops' Conference and Archbishop of Luxembourg, Hollerick is Relator General of the Synod on Synodality, and as such, hold a crucial role in a cause which is close to Francis's heart. In many ways, Hollerick fills the hole left by the now exiting Cardinal Marx with Hollerick's promotion of anti-Catholic ideology, particularly the uh, James Martin Sin being just as prominent as Marx's. Hollerick has described as, quote, false the church's denouncement of such acts in question as sinful, which comes on top of his openness to, quote, ordaining women to the sacred priesthood and opening holy orders to married men. In October, he gave a lengthy interview to Le Servitor Romano, which is a Jesuit uh, magazine in Rome, the oldest newspaper in Rome, the Vatican's daily newspaper, in which he continued to his already public promotion of the James Martin sin. No one excluded, even remarried divorcees, even those who practice the sin, everyone, he stated, adding that the kingdom of God is not an exclusive club. Instead, he described it as opening its doors to, quote, everyone without discrimination. He argued that for the Catholic Church, quote, a deeper change of cultural paradigm is needed, and a conversion of the spirit, and that offering blessings of these kind, like Protestant churches, was not enough, end quote. That may as well be a description of the things George Batzing, the bit, one of the bishops of the German Synodal Way, wants to do in Germany. On the question of ideas and policy, they are all on the same page. Hollerich has spoken publicly on this time and time again, and just received a key promotion from Francis that sends an obvious signal to Germany that he is with them, at least in spirit. The question is of unity, and which is why I ask you in closing this out. Will Francis risk shattering that unity that he prizes so much over doctrine and dogma? Will he risk that after sending such an obvious signal that he supports their ideas through his practice of promoting men who advocate for those same ideas? I hope he punishes them. I really do. I don't think it's going to happen, though. But let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. As does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.